بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to WBIMA Muslim Talk Radio the Muslim voice around the world. I'm Yusuf Jabber, I'm the Executive Director of the Arabic Language Institute in Newark, New Jersey. And we are running a special Ramadan program for our viewers entitled Ramadan Hadith of the Day, where we will be dealing with one to two ahadith of the Prophet um, concerning uh, fasting, uh, and we're going to be taking the ahadith from the book entitled Bulug al Muram Min Adilat al Ahkam, Achieving the Purpose on Proofs of Legal Rulings. And basically, we're going to analyze these ahadith, these traditions of the Prophet linguistically. So today is the Ramadan day one. And we're going to be discussing hadith number one. And the hadith, it reads, An Abi Hurairata radiallahu anhu qala, qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la taqaddamu ramadana bisawmi yawmin wa la yawmaini. Illa rajulun kana yasumu sawman, and the translation of this hadith in the English language, it reads, Do not proceed Ramadan by fasting a day or two days, meaning before, except for a man who used to fast regularly, then allow him to fast. Uh, the first thing that we would like to do is like to abstract all of the asma, all of the, the nouns that are found in this particular hadith. And our first noun is the word ab. Ab. Ab meaning father. Right? And abun, uh, it is considered one of the asma al khamsa the five special nouns. And the other four nouns uh, that are considered special in the Asma' al khamsa um, are Akhun, Wa Hamun, Wa Famun, and also Dhu. Also Dhu. The Muthanna or the door for Abun is. Abawani, Abawani, and the plural for Abun is Aba, Aba, right? And Abun, it can mean father. Uh, sometimes it can mean grandfather, and also it means um, our forefathers. Um, the next word. is Hirun. Hirun, as in Hurera. And the word Hurera, it is Ismu Atasghir. It is a miniature version of the noun, meaning a uh, hero means a cat, but Hurera, it means a kitten, a small cat. So we can use this, this scale or this pattern for Ail or for Ayla to make any noun uh, small or miniature. For example, the word kitab. Uh, if we want to say a miniature book or a notepad, we would say kutab. The word kalam. If we want to say a miniature pen, then we would say kulain. The door for hir is hiran, and the plural is. Hirara, Hirara. 
Um, the next word or the next noun that we have is Rasul. Rasul. And the root word for Rasul is Ra Sin Lam. Anyone that wants to look up the root word using a dictionary like the hands wear, then you will look up the Ra, the Sin, and the Lam. And it means to, to, to send a message or to send a messenger. And the door for this is Rasulani. Rasulani. And the plural is Rusul. Rusul. Meaning uh, messengers or apostles. Um, the next word that we have is Ramadan. Ramadan. And the root word for the word Ramadan is Ra, Meem, and Dod. Ra, Meem, and Dod. And in its essence, it means to be sunbaked or to be scorched. Ramadan. And we just add the Aleph or Noon to Ramadan if we would like to make it Dor. So two Ramadans will be Ramadanan. And then the plural for Ramadan is Ramadan Nat. Ramadan Nat. Our next noun is the word Som. Som. Right? Som. Uh, it is actually a mesdar, a gerund or a verbal noun. It means fasting. It means fasting. Right? And we will see the, the root word or the, 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 the um, verb form of this word um, afterwards. However, since it is a mesdar, um, some mesdars do not have um, plurals nor doors. <clears throat> Our next word then is... Yom, yom, a day, a day. And the door for yom is yomani, and the plural is, huh? A yam, a yam, right? And if you would like to find this word in the dictionary, all you will look up is ya, wow, Mean. Our next word is Rajalun. Rajalun, a man. A man. And it comes from the root word Rajim Lam, to go by foot. Right? And even the word leg or foot in the Arabic language, it is Rizlun. So anyone that goes by foot is considered Rajalun. And the door for Rajulun is Rajulani. And the plural is Rijalun. Rijalun. Right, and the last noun that we're going to deal with from this particular hadith, it is actually a pronoun. It is an attached pronoun, a damir and mutasib. And this attached pronoun is he. Uh, it represents yani he, or yani, uh, uh, sometimes it can refer to possession as in um, his. Right? So who, right, it is an attached pronoun. In this particular pronoun, we see in the word fal yasum hu. Right? It is attached to a verb. It is attached to a verb. And if we would like to make this plural, then we would say huma. Uh, excuse me. If you would like to make this dual, then we would say huma. And if we would like to make it 
plural, then we would say whom. We would say whom. Right? So these are all of the asma that we see in this particular hadith. Right? And some of the nouns are going to carry over um, to other hadith. So make sure that you pay close attention to the explanation so that I do not have to explain it in the hadith to come. Now we move to al-af'al. Al-af'al, these are the verbs, right? And the verbs that are located in this particular hadith, uh, first is qala. Qala. Qala, it is a fi'l al-mawdi. It is a past tense verb that means he said. It means he said. And also, this verb, it is al fil al fil al mu'atal al ajwaf. It is a weak verb because it has a weak letter in the middle. Right? You see that the alif uh, is the weak letter um, that's in the middle of the word qala. It's in the middle of the word qala. However, how will we look up this word in the Hansware Dictionary? Right? Understanding that Aleph can never be a root word. Aleph can never be a root word. Um, so it has to be another uh, vowel or another uh, yeah, the, uh, weak letter um, that's, that takes its origin. So Kala, how will we find out what is the actual middle radical of this verb? Then we move to the modari, the present tense verb, and then then this actual letter will come back. So the modari for kala is yakul, right? And you see that the wow it appears. So if we wanted to look up the word kala in the Hansworth dictionary, we would actually look up the word or the letters kaf, wow, and lam. The command fil al amr for qala yaqulu is qul. Is qul. And because of the weak letter in the middle, then it drops in the fil amr, in the command. And the master or the verbal noun is al qawl. Al qawl. Right? Saying. Right? Or a statement. The next verb we have is Taqaddama. Taqaddama. Right, and the root word of taqaddama is qaf, dal, me. Right, and this verb is actually on wazn, uh, al wazn, al khamis, the fifth form. So once you look in the Hanswell dictionary for qaf, dal, me, then you will go to the fifth form of the verb and it will actually give you its meaning. Right, so this is fit maadi, the mudari, the present tense is. Yataqaddamu Right, and the Amr is Taqaddam Taqaddam And the Masdar is Taqaddum Taqaddum Right? And this verb means to, to approach or draw near or even to, to proceed. However, if you look closely at the hadith again, it says, La tataqaddamu. La tataqaddamu. Right? In the hadith, this verb is actually a fi'l mudari. It's actually a present tense verb. But you notice that something was dropped. And yeah, something was dropped, an extra uh, prefix has been dropped, which was actually the tag. 
So this verb should actually be, if we're referring to enter, or yeah, uh, 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 referring to this verb, it should actually be tataqaddamu. Tataqaddamu. Right? La tataqaddamu. However, there is a rule in the Arabic language which um, permits yani, the form 5 verb. Yeah, I need this, the prefix of the form five verb to be to be dropped as this example. As we look into the surah, uh, surah, uh, surah al-Qadr, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yani tanazzalu al-malaika, right? It actually should say, tanazzalu al-malaika. But because of the this rule of the dropping of the prefix uh, uh, for the fit mudari then we can use this across the board whether it is in the verses of Quran or whether it is in the hadith or the statements of the Prophet Sallallahu or even in our own speech. For example, هَلْ تَكَلَّمْ in Arabiya, Right? Do you speak Arabic? Right? Or we can say هَلْ تَتَكَلَّمُ in Arabiya. Right? Both are considered correct. Our next verb is can. Right, can. And can it is considered and fi'lu and naqis. Right? And fi'lu and naqis. It is considered a being verb. Right? A being verb, meaning yani he is, right? It represents the state of being. Right? And this is why it's considered unfair now, because that it has some type of deficiency, it has some type of shortage. That normal verbs, they express action. But Kana and some of his, her, her, her sisters, right, they do not express action. Right? They only express a state of being. And even in the English language, that we have a separate category of verbs called being, being verbs. The mudari for kana is yakun, very similar to kala yakulu. We have kana yakunu, right? And therefore, the command fil amal is going to be kun, right? Kun just like in kul, right? And the master, the gerund or the verbal noun is. El kon, el kon, meaning existence, existence or being, or being. And our last verb is soma, soma, right? Soma is also yani, a weak verb because it has a weak letter, the aleph in the middle, similar to kana, and kala. So we can follow the pattern. Soma Yasumu. He fasted. He fasted. And therefore the command is Sum. And the mastar is Asum. Asum. However, this particular verb has two Verbal nouns. We can also say asiyam, asiyam, right? And both are are considered correct. <clears throat> Our next category is al huruf, right? Al huruf, right? These are the articles, are uh, the particles, right? If they, if a word is not considered a noun. If it's not considered a verb, then it has to be a haruf. It has to be an article or a particle. And the first haruf or haruf that we see is is an an right. And then an is a haruf jar. 
And in this particular hadith, it means according to or on the authority, on the authority of. Our next harf is la, la. In la, we know it to be usually harf yani uh, nafi, that it negates yani a word. However, in this hadith, yani it is yani uh, la nahiya. La anahiya, that it is the la of prohibition, that you are prohibiting someone to do something. Our next harf is also harful jar, which is B. Right? B is a harful jar. We have wa. Wa. It is harful atf, right? Meaning end, right? Or yani and. Yani wa is a harful atf. It is considered a conjunction. Illa. Illa. Except, right? Illa, it is adatul istithna, right? It is the, the article or the particle of exception, right? And our last one is fat. Fat. Fat is also considered harful atf. It is considered in, 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 in conjunction just like wa, which can mean in or so or therefore and so forth and so on. <clears throat> so at this time, we'd like to go to the next part of our linguistic analysis. And <clears throat> And this is the, the, the i'rab, right? We're looking at the, the grammar analysis of this particular hadith. So if we look at an, an is a harful jar. And what comes after an immediately is a noun, right? Abi. And we said that abi, it is from the asma al khamsa, the five special nouns, right? And the, yeah, it is it's considered majroor. Right? It is a genitive noun. However, these nouns, they do not take the normal kesra. Right? These special nouns, instead of taking kesra, they take the ya instead. And abi is also considered mudaf. It is also considered the first part of the a compound word. And the mudafun ilayhi, right, the second part of the compound word, word is hurayrata. It is Hurerata. And the Mudaf Unilehi is also Mesru. It is also a genitive noun. And however, this example, it does not take a Kesra. Right? It takes a Fatah. And why does it take a Fatah? Because Hurerata, it is considered a Memnu'u Minasab. It is a, uh, an indeclinable noun. It is an indeclinable noun. And instead of taking the Kesra, it takes Fatah. We move on to kala. Kala is a fin madi, right? It is a past tense verb, right? And then again, you say kala, the same fin madi, past tense verb. Rasulu. Rasulu, it is the fa'il. It is the doer of the action kala. Who is saying? Rasulu, the, yani, the messenger, he is saying. In the fa'il, it is marfu. It takes a son, it is marfu, it is. Uh, a uh, nominative or a nominative noun and the sign is dhamma. Right? And it's also considered mudaf, the first word of a compound word. Allahi lafu jalala. It is mudaf only lehi mashroor. It is genitive and the sign is kasra. La is a adaptal or harful la nahiya. It is prohibition. Right? And this verb or this yani, prohibition, it is considered min adatun yani, jazm. That it is a juzif particle that makes the verb that comes after it juzif. Right? Taqaddamu, it is fi'l mudari. It is actually uh, fi'l mudari, it is a, uh, the present tense verb. Right? It is mezum, it is a juzif. 
uh, uh, verb because of the Latin that here. And the sign is the dropping of the noon. Because normally the verb would be Tataqadamuna Tataqadamuna for Antum. However, because it is Joseph, right, this Tataqadamuna is considered from the Asma, or uh, excuse me, from the Af'al al Khamsa. Right, the, the five uh, special uh, verbs. And in the Joseph case, the noon is dropped. <clears throat> Ramadan, Ramadan is maf'ul bihi. It is the object of the verb, uh, it is object of the verb, and it is mensu. It is accusative and the sign is fatah. However, you notice that this noun does not take a tanween. It does not take a ten wing because this now Ramadan is also considered Mamnum in the Sarf with the addition of the Aleph with Noon to the end of it. B harful job, right? So me, it is uh Ismu Majru, it is the uh, uh, object of the preposition, uh, and the sign is Yani Kesra, it is also considered Mudaf. Uh Yomin Mudafun Ilehi. And it's the Majroor and Wa Alama to Jabrihi Kesra. Right? Wa is a harful atf. Right? La is a nafi. It is negation. Yani Yomain. Yomain, yani, because it is conjuncted to the word Yom, then yani, it also is considered Majroor. It is also considered a, juice, uh, a genitive noun. However, this noun is dual. Right, yo manny, yo manny, right, is for the marfur, it is for the, uh, the uh, nominative case, and for the accusative, mansub, and also for the mesrur, it would be yo, yo manny, yo manny. Illa is the, uh, the article of exception. Rajalun, yani it is marfur, wa alama to rafaihi, dhamma, right? It takes the dhamma because it's considered marfur. And it is considered marfur because, yani it's actually the, the fa'il. It is actually the, the, uh, the, uh, the object or the subject of the verb, yani taqaddamu. Kana, yani fi'il madi. Right? Yasumu, it is fin, yani, mudari, yani, this is a, a present noun, in ala, in what, marfu, wa anama to rafahi, yani, dhamma, it is considered, yani, in its natural state, it is considered nominative, and in all nominative verbs, yani, in its origin, takes a dhamma. Yani, so man, so man is considered maf'ul and mutlaq. Maf'ul and mutlaq, right? It is the, Yani maf'ul or yani mutlaq is the absolute yani object of the verb. Why? Because song resembles the verb that it proceed uh, that it comes after. Yasumu soman. So we're saying that yani he fasts yani regularly. He fasts yani regularly. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kellam Allahu Musa taqliman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa, yani conversing, yani conversing. Yani fa is this hadfu uh, at, it is a conjunction. Yani this lam here is considered lam al amr, right? It is considered lam of amr, that is, that is the lam of command, right? Of command. Fal yasum, right? Yasum. Yani it is considered yani fil, yani mudari. However, since the lamb of Amra yani comes before it, and the lamb of Amra is yani min adatul jazm, right? That it is a uh, juzum article. Then it affects the verb that comes after it, making it juzum. And this is what the yasum has a sukun over it. And who is the attached pronoun? And it also, since it's attached to 
the verb, it is considered maf'ul and bihi. It is considered the object yani, of the verb. So again, it says, on the authority of Abi Huraira, yani, he said yani, that the, the Prophet, sallallahu, the, pro, the uh, Messenger of Allah said, yani, do not proceed Ramadan with fasting a day or two days, except a man who used to fast regularly, then let him fast it. Yani, let him fast yani, this day. And the meaning of this particular hadith, right, it is yani, al ihtiyat lahu wa khashiyat ikhtilat nafl bil farid. Right, it is yani, so that we can take caution and that we make sure that we do not yani, mix a voluntary, a voluntary yani, uh, fast with an obligatory yani, uh, fast. So we should not yani, fast a day or two before the month of Ramadan, meaning the last yani, two days of, yani, of Sha'ban, uh, fearing that yani, it will overlap, yani, uh, that the voluntary prayer will overlap with the obligatory prayer. However, it says, يَجُوزُ لِمَنْ لَهُ عَادَةً it is permissible for the one that who regularly fasts. Right? For example, if this person fasts Mondays and Thursdays, or this person fasts every other day, and the day that he normally fasts is, coincides with this day, or the two days, or the one day before, Yani Ramadan, then this person can can fast. This person can fast because it is considered a regular fast uh, for him or for her. However, there is another hadith uh, where it says, "Wa idan tasafa Sha'ban fala tasumu." Right when yani, the middle of Ramadan uh, Sha'ban approaches, then yani, you should not you should not fast. Right, and this again is precaution so that you can become yani, prepared for the month of Ramadan. Yani, if you're not used to fasting yani, on uh, a weekly basis, then you should yani, prepare yourself uh, physically to, um, uh, to fast in the month of Ramadan because it takes a lot of energy. However, if you fast on a regular basis, then you are already physically prepared to fast in the month of Ramadan. And this concludes our linguistic analysis uh, of the hadith of the day. Uh, again, on Abi Hurairata, قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تقدموا رمضان بصوم يوم ولا يومين إلا رجل كان يصوم صوما فليصوم. And we thank you again for tuning in to WBIMA on WBIMA, Muslim Talk Radio, the Muslim voice around the world. Uh, please visit our website, www.muslimbureau.us. I am Yusuf Jabber, the Executive Director of the Arabic Language Institute in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, visit our website at www.arabicinstitute.us. Uh, until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.